In the global prehistory uh, portion of the exam, we only see about 4% of questions and mainly multiple choice questions being asked from this time period. Remember, there are only 11 works of art found in this section of study. What are some of the key characteristics of prehistory art? Well, we see art was started roughly about 70,000 years ago, and they're using the natural materials that they have. They're using ochre. They're using horsehair or, or animal hair. I don't want to say horsehair, but animal hair to use as brushes. Sometimes they're just simply using their fingers. So this is a little bit like, you know, kindergarten finger pain that's going on. But this is where art really begins, and they're beginning to express themselves in what's important to them in this time period of art history. What is global prehistory? That's a good question. Let's try to find some answers to that. Well, prehistory means all things that were before writing. So we really don't know why artists did what they did because we don't have any writing. So we don't understand their function. We don't understand the, the context behind why they created these works of art on like cave walls or why they carved what they carved. And that's a little bit about prehistory. But prehistory is also divided into three time frames. We have Paleolithic, that's Old Stone. We have Mesolithic, that's Middle Stone. And there's Neolithic, which is New Stone. And it's Neolithic that we really have to take some more interest into. But we're not going to talk about that in this video series. We're only going to be talking about Paleolithic works of art. Are you ready? You really? You ready? You got paper? You got pencil? Or you got a pen? Because it's time to take some notes. Paleolithic. Here we go. The first work of art is piece number one. This is from the Paleolithic period. This is Apollo 11 stone. This is found in Southern Africa on the Atlantic side. And this was created roughly around 25,500 to 25,300 BCE. And this is charcoal on stone, founded by the German archaeologist Wolfgang Eck Vent. And the first thing we need to discuss is the content. Now, the content is that we have an unidentified animal form uh, on this stone, and there's a lots of theories that are behind this, and that's why prehistory is one of those difficult areas to discuss. Is this like an oryx, which is a grazing animal, like an antelope? Could this be just a supernatural animal of some sort, or is this just simply an animal that has hind leg, legs and a feline head. Contextually, this was found in a rock shelter off the southern coast of Africa in an area known as the Huns Mountains. Uh, the rock shelter was an ongoing site for human settlement uh, at the time. These were nomadic people. They are moving from place to place wherever the food supply is offered. And this gets the name, the Apollo 11, because it refers to the name of the cave investigated by our archaeologist, Vent, where the rocks were found on the same day as the return of the Apollo 11 spacecraft from the moon in 1969. Uh, also in the archaeological dig, various stone tools were found and materials came from different areas of the continent were also found at this site. Form-wise, we're looking at a two-dimensional drawing uh, the drawing is done in a very strict profile. The head is to the left. We see underneath the head the, the sort of a neck, and then we see the two front legs. And then the stone being broken in half, we see the rest of the torso, and then the back legs, which are much thinner. Um, the silhouette is colored, and the, the, you're using uh, charcoal. Now, this is a portable, and this kind of plays into the nomadic people. This is known as Art mobilier, and art mobilier is a vocab word you should know. It means a small-scale prehistoric art that is movable. And this would be a lot like the woman of Willendorf or the lion human. What is the function of this? Well, again, we're Paleolithic. We have no writing, so we have absolutely no idea what's going on. So the presence of other rock paintings and materials found on the site might suggest that the object is of some ritual use. Maybe there was a shaman within this group, so it could be a shamanistic element. The artist's purpose was to capture the form of the animal itself through a simple visual representation, and it suggests that the artist could have believed that capturing the essence of this animal 
would make maybe hunting easier and thus increasing the chances of survival for this tribe. But then yet again, we really don't know why this was drawn. I mean, it could have just been simply somebody being bored out of their brain and they decided to sketch an animal that they've seen from their mind. So it's some sort of memory magic as well. So again, this is the Apollo 11 stones. This is found in Southern Africa on the Atlantic side. This is charcoal on stone. Our next work is work number two. This is the Great Hall of the Bulls. This is found in Le Co, France. And again, this sits in the Paleolithic period because we have carbon dated this to about 15,000 to 13,000 BCE. And this is known as a rock painting. And again, we have no written language here, so we don't understand why uh, these particular animals were painted. But Content-wise, when we look at the walls of this cave, and we're in several hundred yards into this cave, the caves contain many wall paintings depicting wildlife. And you would see on these walls bison, bulls, horses, and deer, which were all present in the region at this time. And what's really great about this piece in the content is that all the animals are in motion. And so when we get to other works of art, say in the 19th century, we'll see animals in motion, such as horses and cattle. And this is sort of to draw some connections to works of art. We also see rhinoceros in some of these wall paintings. The images, what are they here? They probably depict some sort of ritualistic interaction uh, between man and animal. Contextually, the Loco Caves are located near the southern part of France. This is one of the most extensive examples of Paleolithic narrative art. There are other documented caves in southern France that feature various hand paintings, some of which give us a glimpse into possibly shamanistic beliefs or supernatural beliefs. And the animals depicted were not part of the hunter-gatherer diets. And we know this because we have found where they have lived, and we've looked in sort of their garbage pits. Form-wise, we have large-scale paintings. These are, again, a narrative form of art. The bodies of the animals, and you should take this into consideration when it becomes uh, your vocabulary time, the animals are drawn in what's known as twisted perspectives, and that is that the bodies are depicted in profile, while the viewer sees, say, like the horns from a more frontal uh, viewpoint. You can also use this as composite view. Uh, we are using ochre. It's a natural material. It was used to make these paintings and the dark contour lines uh, present. And some of the animals are drawn uh, as silhouettes. And we also need to take in consideration that these animals are connected to some sort of ground line. So a ground line is very present in these works of art. And they're not going to be like floating in space. We do this overlapping effect to give a sense of depth, or maybe it was just the fact that they're painting on top of one another, and that's just an accidental perception of depth. Scholastics have theorized uh, that the paintings had a connection to beliefs in what's known as sympathetic magic, in which they could create a visual representation of an object to create a sort of connection, a supernatural connection to the actual object in the sort of mundane world and what would be the ultimate goal, and that was to ensure success during the hunting season. What are some of the themes that we could see from these works of art? Well, basically it is hunting and gathering, survival. Um, some sort of supernatural beliefs is another theme, and shamanism could be our final theme found in this piece. So let's talk about the camelid sacrum in the shape of a canine. And on the content side, what we have here is a piece of bone that has been carved or chiseled to resemble the head of a canine. That is a domesticated dog. It could be a coyote or it could be a wolf, which then gives it some symbolic uh, meaning behind it. We have artificial holes. They represent the nose and the cavity and the eye sockets. The action of taking an object from an, from an animal and creating something else from it shows that this society might have had a strong reverence towards the animal world. It was painted at one time. We have found 
uh, remains of red ochre uh, found on the object. Contextually, this was discovered in Mexico right around uh, 1870 in current-day Mexico City. Uh, it is made from the sacrum, that is the large triangular bone at the base of the spine of a camelid. Now, a camelid is an animal, and I've said this before, related to alpaca, camels, and llamas. There are about six animals related into the camelid family. Camelids originated in Asia and Africa, and they might have been part of the migration process to the Americas via that Bering Strait land bridge or ice bridge or whatever we want to refer to it as. Uh, this is bone sculpting was a tradition in ancient Mesoamerica, and the sacrum bone hypothesized to be the sacred across the various global cultures. Canines played an important part in traditional stories and art, and perhaps this is a reference to the Maya uh, creation myth of the Poplo Vu. Uh, Form-wise, it's pretty simple. We have subtractive sculpting occurring here, and it contains carvings and incisions, and they're made by uh, an instrument that happened to be sharp, that could have been Abyssinian, it could have been flint, it could have been something of that nature. Now, we get down to what is the purpose of this work? Uh, what is the function of this? And it may be a simple visual representation of a mythological creature. It could have been utilized as uh, some sort of shamanistic um, medium for communicating with the underworld or with the spirit world. So that's what we have for this particular work. Uh, this is work number three. This is the camelid sacrum in the shape of a canine. I want to take some time out and come to back to our Laco cave painting and this particular piece that was found about uh, a little way from the Great uh, Hall of the Bulls. And this is actually found in a 16 foot uh, deep shaft uh, that contained a stone lamp and a spear. And the scene is, is, is super unusual because it's the only painting in the cave complex that seems to have a storyline that, that we have a human in a very abstract form and an animal. And there seems to be this interaction between the two. And the style is different from many of the other paintings in the cave system. So what we have here is we have a hunter. And our hunter is pretty simplified in form, but recognizable as male. And then we have a bison that's to the right of him. And um, this bison seems to have been uh, disemboweled. And maybe the staff that's below or the baton, it could be a spear thrower, the device that allowed the hunter to throw uh, a lot farther. But is the animal you know, dying? Did the animal attack our humanoid? Uh, again, it's like we don't have any idea because of the lack of writing. But what's really interesting here is this sort of stick-like figure uh, of a bird. Uh, is the painting illustrating a story of a myth regarding the death of a hero? The painting may depict the vision of a shaman, and the shaman might be this, this bird with very long leg. We're not really sure. But again, here this is the only narrative in which we have a human interacting with an animal. And it's just an interesting uh, work of art that was part of the Laco cave system. So what did you walk away with in this lesson? Did you see some similarities between the works of art? Do you see some differences? Because these are important. What are, how are they similar and how are they different? Now I remind you that this is 4% of your exam. There are 11 works of art. And this is where it all begins, okay? Now, if you like what you see, Hit the subscribe button below and keep following me. Our next discussion will be on art that was found in the Mesolithic period. Thanks for listening. Have a great day.